All right, so previously we logged in as a first sergeant and submitted a flag. And that submission was sent to the S1 pool. Uh, if you didn't see that, you can uh, check out the iCard there and see that video. What that offered was the opportunity for commanders, HR managers, uh, I'm sorry, HR data users, managers at the company level to initiate a flag for someone in their command uh, that would go directly to the S1 pool. So today we're logged in as the S1, in this case, a battalion S1. And we are going to review that flag and then insert a workflow template to the commander. Uh, we also have a short video on workflow templates. I'll put an iCard up for that as well. In case you haven't seen that, it talks about how to create a workflow template. And then uh, previously we did a video on um, receiving a PAR as a battalion S1 and inserting a workflow template. So again, I'll put another iCard up for that as well. But what we're going to do on this one is we're just going to ad hoc in the commander. We're not going to um, create a, or in, in, insert a workflow template because this is just going to go to the company commander for approval. So we're logged in here as the uh, S1. You can see I have three notifications over here. So if I click on those notifications, I'll see that I have a request for flag uh, sitting in the box ready for me to action. So I'll go ahead and click on that. And when the screen comes up, I see in the description exactly what the first sergeant put in there. It's a flag for the specialist Yalis. Um, it's a code J, initiate initial flag here uh, for failing APFT. And I see that there's a, a, a DA form 705 or PT card. Now, if I, if I look at this and I see that there's something wrong, I can't change it. I have to go ahead and recommend denial and still forward it for the commander to disapprove it. So it's imperative that Whoever is, you know, initiating this or starting this PAR, this flag action PAR, really understands what they're doing. First Sergeant Commanders, they usually know flags pretty well, um, but sometimes they rely heavily on this one for information. So, so maybe at the beginning of if say um, those those actions still reside in the S1, and then as you know, commanders and, and managers start to learn a little bit more about flag policy and. Uh, they can start to do those things themselves. And I only say that because doing it wrong and then denying it and disapproving it and restarting seems to be a very, you know, arduous process. But so we're the S1. We're just going to insert the commander into this workflow so he can he or she can sign it and be done with the flag. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go to this approval status here and we can see that it's waiting for me to put it in. And so rather than insert a template, which I would do here, I'm just going to add someone to the end of this. And I'm going to... Uh, add an approver and I'm going to put in their user ID. And now when I click insert, once I or anyone in the S1 pool has recommended approval, it'll go directly to the company commander in this case so that they can approve the flag. Again, you could insert a workflow template, send it back through that chain, or you could send it directly to the commander. However, the, the whoever initiates it cannot send it directly to the commander. It has to go through the S1 pool. So that's it. We looked at it. Everything looks good to go. No issues. We looked at the form. We validated all the information on here is correct. I would look at this, you know, this PT card, look at the date of the APFT and see if that matches the begin date. That's probably the extent of what I would do uh, as an S1. And then that's it. I'm going to hit recommend approval. Whoop. I'll put some comments, sir. Flag is ready for signature. We are, you know, S1. Okay, submit. And it's off. It's ready for the commander to sign. So that's it. That's how you do it. Uh, what we'll do in a little bit here is we'll make another video about signing a flag as a commander, which is a lot like signing a PAR or an absence request. A lot of those things are almost identical. It's just a matter of clickology here on, in IPSA. Uh, do me a favor, um, subscribe to you, AG2, like, this video and leave some comments if you would please. Uh, we've also started putting these on MailTube and S1Net so if you're uh, behind the uh, Netcom's curtain and you can't view them on YouTube you're you know you're welcome to check them out there. Um, we'd appreciate comments on S1Net as well. Let us know how we're doing if you find these useful. That's really what we're looking for is you know how, how useful do you find these types of things and it may be a bit early because IPSA isn't out yet, but these may be questions that you had in the, uh, you know, how is it going to work, um, particularly when it comes to setting up policy and procedures in this new IPSA world. 
Uh, we're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. Defend and serve.